The Solicitor General, are you ready to stand trial? Captain Kidd, I had no money nor friends to prepare for my trial last night. That is Captain Kidd, the, uh, the bad man. Here is his spyglass. He was a much maligned man, and one of these days we'll put on his trial just to prove that to you. The whole transcript's here, right in this series of British trials, which contain such desperados as Burke and Hare, and uh, the Body Snatchers, and Dr. Crippen, and King Charles I. But there's one trial that is not in this series. I don't think we have a, a transcript of it. And Mr. Maxwell Anderson, whose interests are historical, as you know, has stepped into the breach for us and written specially for Omnibus. A trial, the trial of Anne Boleyn. since the first time that I gave myself to that last day when when he left me at the lists and I saw him no more. Well, I can reckon it. I've time enough. Those who sit in the tower don't lack for time. could never cipher. He was shrewd and heavy and cunning with his tongue and wary in intrigue. But when it came to adding up an account, he filled it with errors and bit his tongue and swore. Till I slapped his hands like a child and took his pen and made it straight. A king, I said. A king and cannot reckon. I was his clever girl then, his nan. He'd kiss me then and maul me and take me to him lover like. Anyway, why do I think of it now? Would he kill me? Kill me? Henry, the fool, that great fool, kill me. Could I kill him, I wonder? I feel it in my hands. Perhaps I could. So perhaps he could kill me. Perhaps. He could kill me. If I die now, I go out into night. And Elizabeth, my firstling, all I have, must face the new world in the morning. He was guilty with many. And I could have been guilty in revenge. But I never was. This I will never tell him. Even if he kills me, I shall go to my grave. Silent. Good evening, Anne. Why, I have a visitor, my first. Good evening, Uncle Norfolk. I hope you've come to release me from this place. I have, my dear. I knew it would come. I wasn't so sure, but you were right. And I am come to set you free of the tower. And why are you so solemn, Uncle? Why so black-browed? There's never been any change in the color of my brows, and I was never a merry companion. There's a paper for you to sign, and when you signed it, you're free without conditions. No doubt I should read it before signing. If you like, I would sign anything to get myself out of this place. Too many have died here. Not always because they had done anything wrong but because somebody was in power who found them inconvenient. What? What's this? It's what you're assigned. But this, I cannot. What's wrong with it? Leave the kingdom forever. Agree to an annulment of our marriage. Cut Elizabeth off from the succession. Make her an illegitimate child. My dear, couldn't you live quietly somewhere on the continent, perhaps Antwerp, and claim no further rights here? 
Just what would this mean for Elizabeth? She'd go to Antwerp with you. I'd be discarded with a disinherited child. I've been his wife and his queen. When I married him, he promised never to do this. I only married him because he promised that. I know. Let the king keep his promise. There's to be a trial, girl, and I'm to sit over you as judge. I thought perhaps this trial could be avoided. On what ground could I be tried? And on what ground were you arrested? You'll be tried for adultery with Norris, Smeaton, and others. All men will know this is a lie. Will they? This charge is a matter not easily proved or disproved. In the court you will face, the charge is quite often the same as conviction. Let him kill me if he dares wear that on his conscience. I will not sign a paper that says I was never married to him, that makes Elizabeth an illegitimate child. I will not. It's not true. And he knows it. What will it seem to men I was like when I did this? It'll be written and studied. He loved her, and he had her, and he killed her. The books will say. There's a load every man lugs behind him. Heavy, perfumed, sealed, concealed. A package of dead things he drags along, never open, save to put in some horror of his mind, some horror of his own doing, to seal up and rot in secret. Ha! He pretends there's no such thing. He tries to walk as if he has no burden. The stench is covered with purchased scents and flowers. The deeds in this bag, man and king, he utterly cancels, denies, forgets. They prove him an idiot, criminal, subhuman, and yet they're his. He did them and put them there. And they're mine. I did them and put them there. All men have done the same, or done the like, and will. Have you done so much better, you out there in the future? You who I see with a thousand eyes looking back on my secret ways. If you have, then you're young and unlucky. It's still to come. Or else you're old and unlucky. It won't come again. <laughs> Kurt. The carrion and the beast decide where we shall love and when leave off to love another. Not our high purpose. Our resolve, our brain. But the vermin underneath the unacknowledged ball, the hidden wallow, the invisible decay. Whatever she did, I'd done first. For when I knew for the first time she was all mine, then having loved her many years, suddenly I loved her only a little and could look at others. And when I felt my child move beneath her skin, I had no liking for it and turned away. And her lips were an overeaten plate. And I think she went to another. Or others. But of this I'm not sure. This is what I must find out. This I must know at her trial.